What's going on, guys? Welcome back to A&E Podcast. Let's get right into the... In, uh, like, very beneficial. <laughs> well, like, something like that. Uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> See, and it's clear. Because I was just like, oh, look at them. Good for them. <laughs> What's your favorite or best performance? Who would you say are your favorites personally? Who is your favorite person to call? And also, if there's a difference, who's your favorite person to watch live? If it's not the same thing, what was your favorite call? Definitely my favorite so far. I'm like, this is my favorite, favorite performance. and just be good with me. What's going on, guys? And welcome back to A and E Podcast. I know it's been a while since we got to put some stuff out. We got an interview up recently, but we have not done NBA talk, and we're gonna hop right back into it, starting with a new segment that are hot takes that I wrote down that I'm gonna be asking Bailey. He's gonna be answering with his opinion on these takes. So my first hot take is if Victor Wembanyama gets drafted by San Antonio, he's gonna have a Dame S career to the point where he is gonna be an All Star, but doesn't achieve more than that. That's that's a good one. Um, I see what you mean, but when you say doesn't achieve more than being an all star, do you include MVPs in that too? Like um, awards, awards. I feel like are out of the picture. If you look at Dame's career, it's more of him just going to the playoffs, getting eliminated every year, uh, despite having some talent on his team, never getting more than what is it, the second round, third round in the playoffs, uh, conference finals. So I don't think that Wemby achieves much being on a San Antonio roster who has proved that they don't do much when it comes to the offseason since DeMar DeRozan and Marcus Aldridge's team. Um, I, I, get, I get your point. I see the picture. But I don't uh, – if he's as good as he's supposed to be, which is literally best player of all time caliber, then I can't, I can't see them not doing anything. Especially like Dan, – Dan, Dame is a great player, you know, I'm not going to try and disrespect him or anything, mm-hmm. but he's, you know, reached his peak, you know, he's, I don't think ever really been a top five player, right, at at any point in his career. No. So, if Wemby is supposed to be as good as he's, if he's going to be as good as, as he's supposed to, he'll be the best player in the league at one point, you know, yeah. for yeah. several years, if not more than that. Yeah. So, I think even just that alone will attract free agents you know people yeah. will want to play with him. yeah yeah so i can't see it like that just nothing like he's just stuck in san antonio not Being winning. star yeah, yeah yeah not winning all right so i'm gonna stay on before i go to my next question just real quick with wemby it makes me nervous with him being the same build as chet uh, where Chet came down and hurt his foot last year in a in a pro am game or a, a Drew League game, and it also makes me a little nervous watching Wemby play uh, Kenny Lofton Jr. last year. I don't know if you saw the highlights where Kenny Lofton Jr. is bodying him at six, I believe he's six foot eight, six foot nine, three hundred pounds around there. And you know, obviously, not many guys in the league are like that, but he's gonna have to go against a player like Nikola Jokic, who's two fifty, and a guy like Joel Embiid, who's two forty, two fifty, all muscle. So it's gonna it makes me a little nervous. And I know Wemby could score and KD has done it, but KD is faster than Wemby, and he's proved that. But staying going back to the Damian Lillard point, I'm gonna stay with my second hot take, and that is if the Blazers, and despite obviously the report that came out today where they're open to trading their entire team, um, and I know Anthony Simons is on the trade block, but if the Blazers keep Dame, stays healthy, uh, they keep Anthony Simons, keep Jeremy Grant, and trade the number three pick for a legitimate player. Are they contenders next year? No. I this this actually like every time I think about it, I'm not a Blazers fan. I don't care about the Blazers at all, you know. But every time I think about it, it gets me so angry. It gets me so mad. I don't even know why. Maybe just because like if I put myself in their position and I was a fan of their team, it would just I would not want to be a fan anymore. They need to just trade Dame away. He's yeah. Getting- He's getting, you know, he's still great. He just had a great season, like an amazing individual season, yeah. right? Obviously, they he had, he's up. had multiple of those, though. He's had, yeah. he's had a lot of those. Yeah, he's had a bunch of them. He's a great player. But, you know, he's coming up to the end of his career. You know, he's not going to be able to be that guy anymore. So then maybe next season, maybe next season he could be, maybe the season after he could be. 
But after those two seasons, he's going to start to decline eventually. Now, a follow-up question there. Do they trade him to a contender for young stars on that team or young potential stars on that team? Yes. Yes. 100%. Because the way I see it, right, if you do the opposite, which is possibly trading away Scoot Henderson, which, mm-hmm. you know, Wembenyama is obviously the number one pick in this draft. But I am a huge fan of Scoot Henderson. I wanted the Rockets to get a top two pick so badly to get him. I still want us to do anything, almost anything that we can to try and trade up to get him because I think he's going to be amazing. If you trade, especially if he drops to the third pick, which I think is also ridiculous, yeah. but it's possible, obviously, with the reports that have been coming out. Um, if he drops to the third pick and you trade him away to build around an aging Dame, I. That could possibly go down as, like, one of the worst trades of all time. Like, besides the Rudy Gobert trade. That, yeah, I, that that trade, man. I, <laughs> I like, I we talked about it before the season even started. I think that was, like, our first episode ever. And, dude, I think that was probably the dumbest trade I've ever witnessed. Yeah, because so they literally just made the team better. Like, they, they got rid of a, a player that wasn't going to do anything, made the team better. And the team was, okay, cool, you made the playoffs. I mean, the Jazz ended up trading away just about their entire team. But he, what did he do? He didn't, you can't guard the perimeter. Neither can Cat. So you just you go against a team like Denver where all five players could shoot, and now you're screwing yourself over because there's nothing they could do. You can't yeah. guard Jokic out, out in the paint. And Aaron Gordon, who, if you watched uh, the the – first round against him Aaron Gordon wasn't taking a lot of threes he's stepped it up since then but again you have you have Gobert guarding him and Gobert can't and then when he played Jokic Jokic played the perimeter more yeah yeah dude that trade oof (laughs) Oof, man um going on to the next question I'm going to stay with a guy who may be coming to or the next hot take that may be coming to towards the end of his career um James Harden uh, do you think, and I'm not, it's not a diss towards him. I just think that he's obviously re- uh, regressed a little bit since he was an MVP candidate for multiple seasons in a row. Do you think that James Harden will join a, a younger team where he is the number one option and try to help them compete, such as the Rockets going back and, and you know, reuniting with the Rockets or going to a team like Detroit where they're young and they have the potential to be good if he joins them? Do you think that happens? Okay, Detroit. No, definitely, and he's not going to Detroit. I'm not saying I'm. I'm. Uh, my thing is just going to a younger team where there's a possibility that he helps them, you know, progress and and okay. go into playoff contentions. All right, I see what you're saying, but you know, I think it was Shams that reported it. He's torn between the Rockets and the Sixers, so I don't yeah. think there's any teams really in question other than those two, unless he gets signed and traded to the Suns, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um. So I think it's really just between those two teams. And as a Rockets fan, I I really don't think he's going to come back. I really just – I don't see it. I do think he's going to re-sign in Philly. Um, if he does come back, of course, I'd welcome him with open arms. Well, I think there's going to be chemistry issues there. I don't know if you saw – I believe it was Paul George that talked to Jalen Green. And Jalen Green, you know, didn't have many positive things to say about, about James Harden, how – you know, Paul George said he could go both ways. He could help you. He could be, you know, a mentor, or he could just steal your your spotlight and not let you, you know, progress to your full potential. And I think that is a true thing with James Harden. You know, he needs he needs the ball majority of the time. I, he does average. He gets his assists up there. And but you're playing in a guard lineup where Jalen Green is ball dominant, and then you're putting a player like James Harden on that team with him who's ball dominant. It may not. It may it may prevent Jalen Green to getting from getting to the point where he should be. I, I see what you're saying, and I did see the podcast. I watched the whole thing. Obviously, because it, first of all, I love Paul George. Yeah. Um, second of all, obviously, it's Jalen Green. So I watched the whole thing. It was great. Um, but I think – I don't think that's really something to look too deep into. Um, if you look at all of James Harden's, like, teammate history, most of his teammates have – just have amazing things to say about him, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like even Nick Claxton is like a young guy that I could think of. Mm-hmm. Um, he just played with Tyrese Maxey this past season and a half. Um, so if you compare someone like Tyrese Maxey to someone like Jalen Green, they're kind of similar players, kind of. Um, I don't think that would really mess up anything too much. Plus, it would work wonders for Jabari Smith. Yeah. Wonders, you know, like he struggled his rookie year. Towards the end of the year, he got it back a little bit. But you put James Harden on that team. Jabari Smith is going to look 
incredible next season. Yeah, it takes takes the uh, the focus off of him a little bit. Obviously, more to James Harden helps them spread the floor um, with James Harden there as well, I believe. But we're gonna hop to uh, my 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 favorite team from your favorite team, and that is this hot take is is a little controversial because the series the series isn't over. But since Denver, if they win it, if they win it, since Denver has shown what they can do, they will be a focused team in the uh, free agency this upcoming offseason. A lot of I think a lot of people will look at a lot of players will look at them and actually want to sign there, especially with they did. They had a lot of one year contracts. They may try to get those guys back. But if they don't try to get those guys back, they don't have a lot of money. I think that they might be a focal point for some free agents this offseason coming up. Um, I do just want to say at the moment we're recording this, it's game five is tonight in like two hours. So uh, by the time this gets uploaded, they could be champions already. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, I want to say, I don't, I don't, I don't think they really need to focus on free agents like that. You know, like as long as they keep their core guys, Jamal Murray, Jokic, MPJ, Aaron Gordon, um, you really just need those filler guys. You know what I mean? Bruce Brown, those, KCP, those, exactly. kind of, those kinds of filler guys. Yeah, yeah, Exactly. That's exactly. So, like, I don't know exactly which guys are free agents. Bruce Brown, I think, is one, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but if, you could just, if you could just find guys like that to fill their roles, if they don't resign them, that's all you really need. Um, and I think the front office is going to be smart about it, too. They're not just going to try and make a big splash and sign, like, I don't know, some random star who might not fit their team as well and mess up the chemistry, you know what I mean? Um, so I don't think they really need to do that as long as they just maintain their core and fill them with the like similar role players that they have. I think they're good, you know? Yeah, I agree. I think that it makes me nervous with the West, especially with the report that came out today about Golden State wanting to revamp their entire team so that everybody but Curry, um, I'm oh, sorry, everybody on the team except for Curry is on the trade market right now which makes me a little nervous in a sense where as great as it would be for Denver to get a guy like Clay Thompson on their team, it makes me nervous to see what we would trade away for him. And I, yeah. I think that the West does this every year and they stack up, you know, there's reports that Chris Paul, if, if not, you know, signed back by, or uh, the Suns or being fully dropped by them signs with LA. And if he goes to a team like that, you know, it's just a problem for us where we have to be a stronger team than we were this year. And we already shocked everybody. And I think that's, we'll get to that later on. But I think that makes me a little nervous with uh with the West, and they might have to pick up somebody else uh, if they really want to be contenders, keeping that core alive. But we're gonna move on to the next hot take, and this one this one's big because I know that you like this team. Um, so this hot take is the Celtics need to trade Marcus Smart for them to achieve their finals goals. I like this team. I'm not a Celtics fan. I, I know you're not a Celtics fan, but I know you're a fan of Tatum. I know you like Jalen Brown. Okay. You know, yeah, yeah. I know that well, when we talked about it prior, you said that the Celtics were a top tier team, which I disagreed with. And I think that regardless of them making the finals, I still don't believe they are. Um, so I think that, you know, Mark, Marcus Smart has to be gone. He's attempts to ball dominate. He's not that, that kind of guy. If you look at, I don't remember the exact game it was. It was one of the overtime games against the 76ers. There was three game winning shot opportunities and Marcus Smart took all three of those shots. Um. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I wouldn't say like Marcus Smart is the make or break point of their team that s- sets them back from that. Um, you know, Tatum had some pretty bad games in there as well. Jalen Brown also, I feel like they were constantly going back and forth between bad games between Tatum and Jalen Brown. It was like if Tatum was having a good game, Jalen Brown was having a horrible game. If Jalen Brown was having a good game, Tatum was having a horrible game. You know, I wouldn't say it was like, oh, they just need to get rid of Marcus Smart and then they're going to be champions. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I mean, I guess it depends. Like, I guess if they trade him, what they could get back. Yeah. You know, Um, but I do think he's. I think he's one of the better pieces on their team for them, really. I think I, I don't disagree with that, but I do think especially after this playoff, this playoff run. If I'm them, I'm looking to see what big man that I'd be able to get for Marcus Smart having Malcolm Brogdon on our team. I like Rob Williams. I like Al Horford. But you can't play two six nine big men, it, especially in like if you want to go far in the Eastern Conference right now, especially with Joel Embiid. 
you're going against a team like that. You can't have a six nine Rob Williams guarding seven foot one Joel Embiid, who's going to dominate you on all. And I get Rob Williams is, is athletic, but he's not Bam Adebayo, where he could guard you at the perimeter and he's also dominating you down low because of how big he is. You know what I mean? And I don't mean height wise; I mean strength wise. But I think that, and again, Al Horford's old. You know, he's not guarding JoJo on the perimeter. You need a guy who could dominate the paint. And a player who's, again, not that great of a perimeter defender, but a, a center that could make a difference for them could be a guy like Mitch Robinson. Seven foot, lengthy, could dominate the paint for them. And you have a guy like Malcolm Brogdon playing year one who proved that this, you know, this, especially this postseason, that he is that guy off the bench for them. And you have Derek White, who's a taller guard. So my thing is maybe look for a big man as good as Rob Williams is and as good as Al Horford may have played. Al Horford's reaching the last three years of his career. You know, he's done pretty soon. He can't play defense the way he used to. And Rob Williams can't stay healthy. So maybe look for a guy who could give you that paint defense. And if they can play the perimeter, they can. And you keep Malcolm Brockton, Derek White as your one and your two guards. Jalen Brown and, and Jason Tam could play your three and four. And I think if I'm them, that's the move I'm going to make. Marcus Smart has been there for a while. You know, he is the he's the longest guy. He's been on the team the longest. Besides, I actually, I think more than Al Horford. Yeah, because Al Horford was uh, Atlanta beforehand. But I think that it might be the time where he has to go. I know he won defense player of the year two years ago now, but it's, he's not the same guy. You know, you, you can't be throwing up five threes a game. If you're Marcus smart, you're not a shooter. You never been a shooter. You maybe you're making one or two here, but it's, it's the same thing as if, you know, Draymond went acting like it was five years ago and he's shooting as many threes. It's something that you don't want in your team. Like I just rewatched uh, the game seven of the 2016 finals where Draymond had five threes in the first half. You know what I mean? And I'm like, okay, if Draymond did that now, he'd probably get cut from the team. <laughs> so for me it's the same thing with Marcus Smart where you can't shoot that many threes and they they need a big man who's going to be permanently you know playing not sitting out half the season and, and coming back for the playoffs and then you don't fit that roster um but I'm going to move on to talking about the playoffs this next hot take is Jimmy Butler may be the best playoff player we have ever seen Is that it? Is that the? That's, that's it, dude. I think that Jimmy Butler might be one of the best playoff players we have ever seen. I no, no, not Maybe even close. close. Not even close. I just saw his stats per series, mm -hmm. like yesterday, the day before. Uh, he averaged like thirty-seven in the first round, and then ever since he's been averaging twenty-four or less. Um, in the finals, I think he's averaging twenty-two. I'm not 100% sure because the stats were not fully updated. It said 17. He's not averaging 17. He's averaging more than that now. But um, I will say he did mess up his ankle against the Knicks. So that could be why he's taking a step back since the first round. Um, but ever since the first round, he just hasn't been playing as well, you know. Yeah. And he kind of I feel like he's been getting a pass for some of the bad games that he's been having. Because he really, like I said, he's he hasn't averaged more than 24 points since the first round. Yeah. So he's not on this crazy tear that everybody's saying he's on. Even though I love him to death, and, you know, I, I still think he's an amazing player. Um, I have his jersey hanging up in my closet from when he was on the Bulls. I love him. Um, but I think this postseason run that he's having is definitely a little bit overrated. Not even close to the best playoff performer of all time. Yeah, I don't want to say that it's an overrated run. I think that is phenomenal. Again, Giannis may have been hurt. We don't really know. Giannis likes to downplay his injuries a lot. And in that first series, you know, I think that he did downplay the back injury when he came down hard. Um, so it did hurt them a little bit. But I think as an eight seed to go to the finals, this is the second time that he's made the finals in the last three years and shocked the entire world. That bubble run, I don't think people thought that Miami was going. They right. were, you know what I mean? That's So to go against them, played his heart out in that series. I think that he did get a little cocky this year. Um, especially this series, making the uh, Hemi Buckets brand while you're in the play, while you're in the finals and you tied a, a one, one series. And now you're down three to one at, while this episode's coming out, you're down three to one. You're after one win, you're going, Oh, I'm going to make a brand called Hemi Buckets. And I get it. You know, listen, you're great. And again, these takes aren't what I believe. I think they're just takes that, that spark conversation that are interesting that you can agree or disagree on. Um, but again, you know, two times that he's shocked people, his team is good, but I think that, I don't want to say the weakest. I don't want to say that these are two of the weakest teams that we've ever seen in the finals, but I believe in the last five years, maybe they are probably the two weakest teams we've seen in the finals, except for that Miami team that made it in the bubble. These Neither of these teams are stacked with all-stars. I think, did Bam make the all-star game this year? Yeah. So then, so one team has two all-stars, the other has one. You know what I mean? This they, is 
They both only have one. Jimmy didn't make it. Oh, right, so oh yeah, there you go. So Jimmy didn't make. It. So they both have two times. Or sorry, two teams that have one All Star each. I think that's the first time we're seeing this probably since like 2006. Like we we've seen teams that make. It. You know, think back to how many teams. Technically, the 2021 finals. I think the Bucks only had Giannis an All Star that year. Was Middleton uh, All Star? And if it wasn't, it was Drew an all-star. So maybe there you go. So then that's the since that team, it's the and again that those are two great players. And so I mean, I think that Bam, Jimmy, and and their roster are great, depending depending on who you want to say, because Kyle Lowry, people consider him an all-star. I know now he sucks, but I hate him. Um, but you could say that Jamal Murray is an all-star caliber player. You could say that Jimmy and Bam are both all-star caliber players. And I, that back then you could say that uh Middleton and Drew were both all-star caliber players as well. But again, dude great run by both of them i think that jimmy got a little too cocky and got in his own head and he's now being guarded by who we saw as one of the best defensive playoff performers in the last however many years and aaron gordon who just locked up the entire every all-star in the league in the playoffs um but i'm gonna hop to the second to last hot topic and i'm actually gonna skip over one that we i had sent to you and i'm gonna do another one because this is something interesting i saw nikola Jokic, by the end of his career will go down as a top three center of all time Mm. that's tough I mm. it does depend how the rest of his career goes um even top five is hard top three I don't know if I could give him top three I don't know if I could between you know Kareem Shaq Hakeem I don't know if he could dethrone any of those guys really um Top five. I could see it being more realistic if it's top five. Mm-hmm. Even then, it's kind of. I think I think he could be top five, yeah. But top three, I don't know. Those three guys that I said, I don't think he could get past them. I'm gonna I'm gonna say yes. I think that I think that he can be. Um, as great as those guys are, I think that Jokic is. I don't want to say he's underlooked as a player. But what he has done is sort of underlooked. You have to look at, like, obviously how many triple doubles he has without even caring about them. You know what I mean? Like, gets asked in an interview, you know, how does it feel to get this many triple doubles? Uh, you know, it's easy when you're stat padding going back at Kendrick Perkins. And even the first, uh, what is the first ever duo in NBA history to have 30-point triple doubles between him and uh, him and Murray. And the first ever player to have a triple double their first ever game in the finals. And I think it was either the first or second ever player to have 30, 20, and 10 in a finals game. So not only did he just carry his team to the playoffs with Jamal Murray, he is now completely shredding records, getting to the finals his first ever time. And then you have to look at what he's done during the season, making the playoffs with a starting five of him, uh, Will Barton, Monte Morris, Jeff Green one year. You know what I mean? So, and Aaron Gordon, sorry, that was two years ago when everybody was hurt. And Aaron Gordon tried to be Steph Curry in the playoff run. Obviously, he didn't do anything in the playoff run. But I think that, the thing it depends on what your top three of centers is as well. Um, yeah. Obviously, everybody looks at it different. I think that Wilt is a top three center of all time, and I, I I personally think that Wilt might be the best center ever. Obviously, we don't have the videos and all the statistics may not be true, like everybody said. But having the highest vertical in the league is a seven foot one center who was also the second fastest player in the league, right behind Oscar Robertson at the time. Um, I think that Jokic can can take that leap and be there, depending on how obviously how the rest of his career goes with how it's gone already. Um, so like with Wilt, I would put him – it's hard to say with him because he played so long ago, you know what yeah. I mean? It's hard to compare him to the Kareem, Sakeem, Shaqs, who played in a way more competitive league. Um, But I would have him at least at four. Mm-hmm. And I think Jokic, you know, if he continues this trajectory of his career, um, could slot right in there at fifth. Um, But I think that's, like, the most I could really put him at, honestly. Yeah, I think that's – Unless he goes on to get five more MVPs, three more finals MVPs, you know, like well, again, dude, to be as and it it blows my as a second like people forget how late he got he got drafted during a Taco Bell commercial, man. Like he's a second rounder, first ever second rounder to win MVP, first ever second rounder to win two uh two back to back MVPs, and he also should have had another one this year. I know we talked about it, and if it wasn't him, it was Giannis. But again, he was in the conversation for the third year in a row, and if Kendra Perkins didn't open his mouth on live TV, then Jokic probably would have won it. And I think that, again, it's going to be, it's going to come down to, I think, his, probably the last three or four years of his career to see how long he actually plays. Cause he's not a knock on wood, man, but he's not a injury prone player at how big he is, which is, is, yeah. is crazy. 
rolls his ankle last game, still play 29 minutes that game. You know what yeah. I mean? It's also because his, his game doesn't really rely on like his strength or athleticism. Or yeah. But dude, he's, he's also skill. he's the best playmaker in the NBA right now. There's yeah. close, if not the best, second best. I think that dude. Uh, he's making a player like Aaron Gordon look like he's an all-star. He's making a player like Kevin. Uh, oh, yeah. I do agree, yeah. You know what I mean? Bruce Brown, a player who Mike Malone had called during the offseason and asked why he wasn't getting signed, and he just said, nobody knows how to use me. He's dropping 27 points in a playoff game now. So, again, I think that it's going to see – it's going to come down to the last few years of his career, but we're going to move on to our next and last hot take for this segment, and that hot take is the Los Angeles Clippers, because of age, just missed their final chance to make the playoffs with – or the championship with this team. That's tough, man. Uh I wouldn't say it's their final chance. I think with this roster, it is. You mean like? With not their obviously they still have the rest of the their lives in the NBA. Whoever's going to be on that team, you know what I mean? I'm not. I don't mean it's the last. No, year. I, no I know what you. I know what you mean, bro. I I'm think not, with with I'm the not girl, Clippers, <laughs> never <laughs> again. Eternity, bro. Never, <laughs> never again can the Clippers make the finals. Their their team is going to be cut from the league. Um, <laughs> I think. I think that. In the Paul George, Kawhi Leonard era, that was the last opportunity that they had to make the finals. Mm, I don't. That's it's tough because, you know, it always with them it comes down to health. You know, if they keep if they keep them intact, Kawhi and Paul George, for next season, like if they don't trade one of them away, um, and they stay healthy, I still think they have as good a good a chance as anybody you know but it's always just that question mark of health for me you know and if they can't stay healthy then yeah they're done that's what it looks it just looks like they can't i they, it looks like they can't stay healthy and i think that they're gonna have trouble keeping up with these younger rosters now that are finally making the playoffs like a team like the grizzlies a team like the thunder who are probably going to be there if not this year again next year you know what i mean or this upcoming year two years i don't think that Paul George and Kawhi, especially Kawhi Leonard, as much as I love him as a player, and I think that he's probably one of the most all-around great players in the world. Yeah, you know he can't stay healthy for more than uh, two, three games in a series. And then again, that, with how old their team is, Russell Westbrook played awesome in the in the playoffs. But you have a guy like Russell Westbrook, who's you know he's against the end of his career. You have a guy like Marcus Morris, who's also pretty old. And then obviously you have your young guys in Ivica Zubac and um, Bones Highland. But you do have those older guys, and I think that because of how old their team is, they're not going to be able to compete with the Denver Nuggets, with the Memphis Grizzlies, depending on how what Golden State does with the Golden State Warriors team if they get younger. Yeah, no, you're making good points. Um, but I wouldn't say it's their last chance. Yeah. I give them yeah. another season or two at, at least, you know, but the health concern is obviously always there, so – yeah. Oh, wow. right, we're going to that was a good first segment. I liked doing that for the first time. We'll probably get back to that very soon. We're going to move on to a segment that I like because we do have an intro video for this segment, and that is Bailey's favorites. So anyway, what's your favorite or best performance? Moment? Who would you say are your favorites personally? Who is your favorite person to call? And also, if there's a difference, who's your favorite person to watch live? If it's not the same thing, what was your favorite call during a game? Definitely my favorite so far. I'm gonna, this is my favorite favorite performance moment so anytime we've done an interview um or he's talked about something did the drink reviews bailey always ask what his favorite was or ask what their favorite was and said stated what his favorite was so we're going to go on to bailey's favorites new segment and we're going to start with all nba stuff this year so who was your favorite rookie from this year favorite rookie obviously as a rockets fan it's easy to say a rockets player i could say jabari or tari you know tari probably had the better season overall so I could always go with him, but um, I'm going to do things that are not for my team. I'm going to go with a wild card here. I got his jersey sitting right next to me. I'll, I'll bring it out real quick. Don't be surprised. He's a he's he's up next, man. He's up next. I love this guy. Jeremy so right, Throwing it right. There we go. Yeah, there you go. There you go. There we go. Interesting choice. Not somebody I would. Not somebody I would have expected at all. I like Jeremy, not even close to it. I don't think. Jeremy Sohan. I I love this guy to death. You know, I feel like he just does all the right things that I love in a player, 
you know, like his hustle is amazing. His like mentality is just great. You know, he, I think towards the end of the season, he had like a 30 bomb, you know, like his, that, and he's not known for his scoring. Like he didn't get drafted because he's a scorer. He got drafted for his defense and his like versatility, you know. Um, so if he gets like his scoring together, he'll be amazing, you know. So I, I re- I'm a real big fan of his for sure. Oh, I don't know God. if he made first team, but I think he at least made second team. I would assume so. I didn't. I don't remember the. I didn't. I don't think I even looked at the rookie first teams this year. I remember seeing the NBA all NBA first teams. I didn't think I looked at the rookies once. Um, we're gonna move on to the next question. That is your favorite moment or highlight from this season. Okay, so I, I'm always gonna throw in a Rockets player or moment just because I have to. You know, I have to. My favorite Rockets moment this year. I'd have to say it was uh, Jabari Smith's winning pull-up three against the Pelicans. Uh, I was watching that live at a bar. I was with you, I'm pretty sure. Probably. I pulled up I pulled up the stream on my phone because I got a notification that it was a close game. And they inbounded it to him, and he just, like, I, I don't even know if he – I think he took a dribble, like, still pretty far behind the three-point line, shot it, good. That was amazing. Amazing. I was so happy at the bar. Everybody was like, what's wrong with this guy? But, um – Besides the Rockets, how could I not go with LeBron breaking? Uh, what are you rolling your eyes about? No, 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 no. no it wasn't. Was it wasn't at you. It wasn't at you. It wasn't at you. <laughs> what it was about LeBron? You're rolling your eyes at LeBron. <laughs> LeBron breaking the all-time scoring record. How could I not? How could I not? I forgot that even happened this year. I have. I bought his jersey before he broke the record, and it came in the day he broke the record. I was so hyped, and it's literally the exact color color jersey that they wore that night too so that's pretty dope in my opinion yeah, I mean, that, that's that's actually really cool. i with all with how hectic the hectic the postseason has been i still i forgot that was even a thing this year yeah i mean a lot, a lot of, of I feel like a lot of people forgot about that yeah it's just it's so far like so it was it was earlier in the season right yeah i think like it was an earlier game in the season so yeah i totally forgot about that um I think it was in like january or february around yeah i believe so um all right we're gonna move on to the Next favorite, and that is your favorite player from this season. Okay. I got two favorite players that I could say. In general, my favorite player of all time is James Harden. I'm not going to say him. Um, Jalen Green, not going to say him. But obviously, those are my guys. Favorite player from this season, I just want to give a shout out to someone who really deserves it. I also brought his jersey out for this. So let me grab it. Darren Fox. I think that should replace the jersey that's over your head right now. All right, come on, bro. <laughs> come on, bro. With everything, happen- with everything happening, I might have to blur that out. <laughs> Pretend it's a different number. <laughs> it's just a really nice jersey, all right? <laughs> um, No, listen. He's got his problems, but let's not talk about him right now. That's fair. That's fair. But, uh, yeah, for this season at least, Darren Fox had an incredible season. Um, he made third team All NBA, if I'm correct, right? And first All Star appearance. Yeah, and his first All Star appearance. So I was really happy with that. I've been a fan of him for forever. So seeing him really get that recognition this year, especially with the Kings being the three seed, um, I was I was really happy with his him just getting that recognition finally. You know, winning Clutch Player of the Year as well. Yeah. You know, he just had a great season. So for this season. My favorite player, Darren Fox. Interesting. Yeah, I've I've liked him for a while. I always wanted him to be an all star. He's one of those guys that you know I just rooted for, uh, regardless of how bad his team has always been. And I do like that team a lot. Obviously, my boy Kevin Herter's over there, so I gotta like them a little bit now, even though they're in the West. Um, but we're gonna move on to the last question of this episode, and that question is: Who is your favorite award winner from this season? Favorite award winner? I mean, like I just said, Darren Fox won Clutch Player of the Year, so. Technically, I guess it would be him, mm-hmm. um, but I'm I'm not gonna say it because I just shouted him out already. Um, you know what? I'll go with I'll go with Rookie of the Year, Paolo Bencaro. Um, I think it was I don't know if I said it in one of our last episodes, but I think it was absolutely ridiculous that he did not win it unanimously. Mm-hmm. I think that was ridiculous. Walker Kessler, man, deserved that vote. <laughs> 
as good as Walker Kessler was, I don't think he deserved the vote this year. Sorry, Walker. Yeah, bro. Especially, especially from some guy who reports for the Salt Lake Insider or whatever. And listen, was. shout out Walker, man. But dude, you're great. You covered up for Rudy Gobert very, very well, dude. But not, not on Paolo's, uh, not on Paolo's level, unfortunately. I was a huge fan of Paolo even before he got drafted. Um, if you guys remember, every single mock draft and like every single NBA insider had him going third to the Rockets. And I couldn't be more happy with that because I thought he was the best player in the draft. Mm -hmm. I was like, no way he's going to drop to the Rockets. This is ridiculous. Yeah. And then obviously we all remember what happened on draft night. Like literally like five minutes before the pick was in, Woj just tweets, oh, the Magic changed their mind. They're taking Paolo Bancaro. And I was like crying basically. Yeah, I remember us texting about it too. Like we were texting yeah. as soon as – because I, I remember I was mad that um, Denver didn't dress, draft Jovic. Yeah, and we drafted Christian Brown and set, which I was super wrong about because yeah, I told you he was good, bro. I told you he was good. Yeah, yeah, I did not think he was that good. I was <laughs> like, who's this white kid? I want the other white kid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but all right, interesting choice of Paolo. I mean, I, Paolo deserves it, man. He's gonna be a force. He is oh, yeah. a force. I love him. Just to clarify, though, I'm still super happy with Jabari. I was I was happy to get him too. Uh, I just really did not want Chet. I'll put that out there. I still hate him. I don't care. Yeah, man, I, I think that, again, Victor Wembanyama scares me with, with the same build as Chet, but we're going to see what happens there. Um, All right, that's going to do it for us this episode. For Bailey, I am Tom Lutner, and we will see you for the next episode of A&D Podcast. Peace, guys. Peace.